Begun removing the coin max, so I'm going to try to clean those up first. And uh, here's one. And um, this is pretty much all it is. Can't get good lighting here, the sun's in my freaking face, but plastic coin acceptor. There's the, uh, the reject slot if it ever rejects the coin. There's damn it. Here's the um, one of the coin mechanisms. I pulled it out, I'm getting it ready to paint it. I'm gonna paint the faceplate, make it look good again. I'll do that to the other one too. It's pretty much all it is. It's a very simple mechanism. It, uh, I believe, it sizes the coin. It checks it for uh, uh, ferrous prop ferrous properties, like for instance. If the um, coin is made of steel, it will automatically reject it. And this actually opens up. Let's see what's in there. I got lucky because both coin mechanisms appear to be fully functional. But it's all plastic. It's amazing how cheap that feels and looks. But it works, so, you know, who's complaining, right? It actually has cleaning instructions on it, in case somebody put something bad in there. And sticky. There's probably a magnet here. Let's see if we can find something that will stick to it. Here's a hook. Yep, there it is. There's the magnet. So if you try to throw a planchet in there, or a steel slug... Um, there you go. <laughs> That's how it stops it. The metal is kind of oxidized here because it was in a barn for so many years. But there's no real damage done to anything. I'm going to try to clean some of that off. I don't think that's going to be easy, but give it a shot. So here is the uh, coin acceptor, the coin slot. We're going to clean that up with some steel wool and WD-40. I'm going to do the same with this... Uh, coin acceptor. Look at how rusty that is in there. Nasty. That's just from sitting in a barn, not from sitting out in the rain. That's just being in a in an environment where the temperature changes rapidly. Condensation forms on metal and now you wonder why I store my motorbike indoors. So we're gonna take this outside and I'm gonna clean it up one more time with alcohol and shoot it with a coat of engine paint. Engine paint is great because it's tough as nails. And uh, maybe I'll throw it in the oven for a few minutes to bake it on there. Here's one finished door, or I'm sorry, a coin mechanism cover. I mistakenly used glossy paint. I should have used matte paint, but that's okay. It really who gives a crap. Um, it looks better than it did, and that's really what I was going for. Now, for this door, this is going to be a challenge. So, I'm going to have to use automotive body filler, or fiberglass body filler, and we're going to fill in all these chips. We're going to even that out. We're going to fill in these holes. We're going to give the whole thing a good sand. We're going to then put a coat of Rust-Oleum Red uh, spray paint. Or I might use um, Rust-Oleum Fusion, or Krylon Fusion because it bonds really well to this stuff and uh, that'll make it nice and even looking and uh, for the edging I'm gonna have to find some kind of material to redo all the edging with um, I have some I have this stuff here it just has to be cut down a little bit it might work it might not it's worth a shot but we'll give that a try We've got the other one baking in the oven, the other coin mechanism plate. And uh, once the paint is baked, it uh, takes on a very tough, hard to scratch surface. Unfortunately, the gloss paint doesn't look so well because, I mean, this surface really needs to be sandblasted completely and then painted, but I don't have the 
desire or the equipment to do so. Um, I mean, it's a coin mechanism. I could probably buy a brand new one for just a few bucks. I mean, they're really not hard to find. What's nice about these coin mechanisms is that they're relatively universal. It's like a one-size-fits-all solution. This coin mechanism will fit just about any arcade game made to those standards. So, that's pretty easy. Now, as far as wiring goes, this couldn't be any simpler. Um, you have your trigger wires. If I were to touch these terminals together, it would be one credit. It would, it would uh, be like inserting a quarter. So all those coin mechanisms do is cross these two wires when you put a quarter in and it accepts the quarter. These are lighting wires. These are what light up the coin mechanisms. Both bulbs are burned. I have to replace them. I'm going to go to Radio Shack today and try to find some. If I can't, well, good luck to me. I'm sure I can get them on eBay. That's that. That's pretty much it. Now for a little before and after action. So this is before. Yuck. And this is after. Not bad. Before. After. Okay. Before. You. And after. Nah. Better. Better than it was. Now, I did find a coat, or I'm sorry, can, a coat, a can of arms. A can of arms. A coat of arms. I, I found a can of low gloss black engine paint. It's not matte, but it's low gloss. Eh. Okay. Uh, bear with me on this one. I recoated the other one. I just put a, about two coats of paint on it. And it looks beautiful. Um, this is the this is what gloss does. It it really acts. It gloss paint really shows every imperfection on the surface. So unless you have a nicely perfect, clean, and you know, defect free surface, go for the gloss paint. But if you don't, low gloss hides just about everything. So what we're doing here is we're mixing up some. Uh, short strand fiberglass filling. and we're going to use that to fill in some issues. I've got my putty knife here, a metal one, which is nice because I can reuse that. The stuff will flake off once it dries. I'm just going to mix the stuff up real thoroughly with the hardener. I don't know if this stuff is any good anymore. It's I, I bought it like five years ago, so I don't know if it goes bad or what. Um, as we'll find out, won't we? It used to be a lighter green color, but now it's not. So, who knows? So, I'm going to start off by filling in some holes here. Okay. So, we've got the, uh, that whole area pretty much mudded up. I'm gonna have to sand it and then give it another coat. Um, yeah. I'll probably have to go over it one more time. Actually, I have a, a, a putty substance that can be used to fill in the gaps and make it look a little bit better. So there's these three or four holes. And then we're gonna put a coat of primer on it and a coat of red Rust-Oleum. Outside, I have the coin box drying. I've given that a nice coat. I cleaned it up pretty good and uh, gave it a coat of black engine paint. It's starting to look kind of ratty. And uh, we're getting there. Now, today I've got to go out and pick up some fuses. And I need some light bulbs. So I'm going to try to find one of these bulbs. I don't know if I'm going to have any luck. What is this? 12 volts? 757. That's the bulb type, but it doesn't give me the specifications, so that'll be a bit of a challenge. So, here are the completed coin mechanism faceplates. They look pretty good. I don't think I could ever do a better job than that, unless I were ha had a sandblaster at my disposal. 
Um, oh, yes. One of these coin acceptors has a test date of 6 of 94. It's possible that this one could have been replaced. This one doesn't have that label on it. They're the exact same units. Um, so. Oh, yes. The manufacturing date on this switch is 07 of 87. So this is probably original. This is the one that was on the one that had the 1994 test sticker on it. So it could be newer. Okay, so here's the finished product. Not bad. Looks way better than it did originally. Coin return buttons look pretty good. I just need to get some bulbs. I'm going to light them up. And here's the other one. It again looks just like the, uh, the other one did. So there you go. Restored coin mix. Back in working order. So let's do a quick test to see what happens to this coin when I put it in. It accepted it. Nice. Let's see that again. I'm going to put this one in slow motion. So we're going to see how the coin is accepted by the machine in slow motion. Here we go. Okay. So this stuff is dried and sanded. It's it cured pretty fast. But you can still see it's not perfect. And I didn't expect it to be since the stuff is 100 years old. So that's why we have this. Glazing and spot putty. I could put another coat of um, fiberglass on this, but this spot putty is actually pretty good stuff. It, it will actually help smoothen that up. So all you do is apply it, smoothen it with a, with a trowel or something, or a knife, and uh, it fills in those little craters. So to fill in the uh, major imperfections and gouges, that's what the fiberglass is for, but then to kind of finish that off, fill in any imperfections in the fiberglass you can use this spot putty it's amazing stuff works great so we're gonna let that dry that could take a little while but now I've got to go out to the store and go to the laundromat get my laundry done and I'm gonna find something to edge this with I don't know what I'm gonna use <laughs> the stuff that they had originally used I'm sure is available but all of it has to be taken off and replaced so especially for this door Unfortunately, there's nothing I can really do for the damaged wood here that would make sense. Um, I'm just going to have to live with it. Alright, so here's the door. I've uh, sanded the red lead. That's the <laughs> street name for this stuff. Basically putty. And I you know, put that on and sanded it. I'm going to put a coat of primer on it and see how it looks. I got some uh, matte red paint. And I want to put some uh, primer over that first, so let's do that. So I've got our first coat, actually about two coats of primer on this now. I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then we're going to put maybe another coat of primer on it, and then we're going to do the... Um, I bought matte red paint. We're going to put that on there. And call it a day. Um, so... It looked like hell before, now it looks less like hell. Um, you can obviously see. I could do a much better job on this if I really wanted to. The best thing for me to do in this case would be to remake the door, which wouldn't be too difficult with a scroll saw. Um, I don't have a scroll saw, or I'm sorry, a jigsaw, but I don't have that. See, <laughs> the smart thing to do would be to just get the same thickness plywood um, finish grade maybe um, apply the laminate which is made of formica and uh, put that on both sides the red and the white on the other side but you would have to do the other side actually and then you would um, you know, use a good quality adhesive clamps and all that weight it down you know <clears throat> then cut the door to size 
and then using a jigsaw, you can actually, well, what you would do is use this as a template, draw out the patterns on both sides, and boom, done. But we don't have the, the tools to do so, so we're not going to do that. Just let that dry. I went to Radio Shack, I went some, went shopping, got some stuff. I also picked up a new, this is going to be the carpeting for the inside of the, the uh, display area. I'm going to take that all apart, cut this down to size, and glue it down. We're going to get this linoleum out of here. Got my paint, I got some fuses. Radio Shack had the correct fuses. These are slow blow fuses, 4 amp, 250 volt. And believe it or not, they had my light bulbs too. Boom. <laughs> I couldn't believe they had these. Uh, these are 28 volt, 2 watt bulbs. And these are for the coin mix. I've got some tape. There's my Loctite adhesive. That's for the floor. And this is the red paint that's going to be a close enough match to this. And I'm going to repaint this to match it. Um, so I have uh, that. And I've got my fuses for the lighting system. Yeah, baby. Alright, so we've got all the lights up. It's all powered up. Ready to be run. So if I were to short out these, it would uh, it would start the game. But uh, we're not going to do that. It's going to shut her down for the night. Got a couple of bulbs out. Let's see what kind of bulbs these are. It would be sweet if it was just loose, but no. No, not, not, not possible. These are 60 volt, 10 watt. Are you serious? Where the hell am I going to find those? You're kidding me. You're kidding me here. 60 volt, 10 watt. Like, I'm going to find those somewhere. Yeah, I bet they sell those at freaking Walmart. Damn it all. All right. Eh, it'll be another challenge. These might be an internet purchase only. Well, it still has to cure before I start assembling the door, but... Well, the paint still has to fully cure before I start assembling, but this is pretty much what we're left with. Um, again, this paint is still malleable, so... I don't want to touch it too much. I may have already touched it too much, but anyway. You could probably use another coat. Let's do a quick color comparison here. Now this was the only semi-gloss red that I could find. Here, let's get some light on this. Um, but it's a pretty gosh darn close color match. Look at that. I don't think I could have done better. Um, yeah, I don't think I could have possibly found a better match. Depending on the lighting, you know, you can notice it, but I think we're good. I'm going to slap one more coat of paint on this tonight before I hit the hay. And, um, just to, you know, and then we're going to let it dry for about a day or two before we move forward with this. And here is the finished product, the door. Here's different lighting. It's almost a perfect match. And this is what I ended up edging it in. So now I've got to put the coin max in so I can mount the hinges. What do you think? Better? Whoops, I thought that hole was there for a reason, and I didn't fill it in. Oops. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to go back and fix it, so screw that. 
But there you go. Um, and the door opens. I tweak, tweaked the hinges a little bit and got them to work correctly finally. So now that that works okay. It's never going to close perfectly. In fact, yeah, it's going to need some assistance, but that's okay. I can I can live with that. But the edging seems to be holding up okay. Nice. Um, I forgot to clean the back side of this with uh, bleach, but I'm going to do that. This is mold. That's what that is. Now I'm going to wire it back up. So, this is the easy part. We've got our two lighting circuits, and they're not really polarized, so I'm going to get those hooked up. And we've got our two coin mech, or uh, coin acceptance triggers. Alrighty, we're powered up. We've got lighting. We've got we've got it all, baby. Alright. Look at that, huh? Let's put a quarter in. Or not. Sweet. This coin mac didn't accept. Why not? Must be an alignment issue. Okay. I have two credits to play, so let's, let's uh... Aww. I'm going for that roll of masking tape there. Oh, gonna lose it. Lost it. Damn it. There it goes. I think my uh, ribbon cable came loose again for the timer. I'll fix that. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the interior apart and start laying out the, um, the new flooring. And then I'll fix that ribbon cable again. That's what happened to it. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Not this time. Interesting. Maybe it does that when there's a problem. I'll have to restart it. I know the ribbon cable is messed up. So let's restart the machine. You still lit up? Yep. Well, you can barely see it because of the light behind me. So now we're going to start on the floor. I've already ripped up the tiles and I'm going to take this plastic shield off. So I've got the uh, area prepped for um, spray adhesive. I've got the carpet roughed in. Um, got some spraying going on here. We don't want it on the glass. That's why I've got all this stuff up. Incoming. Liberal coat of this stuff down there. I think it's misting. I don't want that. Normally, I would spray both sides of the material, but yeah. Fumage is bad with this stuff too. Gotta be careful. And that, my friends, 
It's a carpet the inside of your egg choice. And I took the cabling out. But I did that because there's a lot of mold on the cable. Believe it or not, the wire was covered in mold, so I got that all off. That looks awful. But this is the uh, claw wiring harness. Just poke that through the hole here. And re-secure it. I'm going to get some electrical tape for that pipe to cover it. It was taped there before, so I'm going to put tape back there again. Okay, so carpeting is in place, tubes in place, shield back, and I even carpeted the inside of the chute. Make it look a little bit nicer. Alright, so I've restrung the claw. Um, I cheated. I, I didn't use the correct stuff. This is what they actually use. It's a peeled parachute cord. Stuff is tough as nails. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it locally, and it is the holidays, and I'm not going to go and try to order some. So I um, just I substituted. Uh, this is actually braided nylon. Um, it's not rated for what the factory string would be rated for, which is this is only good for about 17 pounds. Um, so I mean, it'll never break reasonably. <laughs> so I think we're going to try it now. I'm going to. Go ahead and power the machine up. So I've got to plug in the, I'm just going to shut it down, plug in a transformer. Let's see what it does. Well, I say that worked quite well. All right, um, let's load it up. Okay, one of the problems was, if I dropped it here, oh, good, that's where the real issue was. Looks like it's working. So I had, um, the string was too damn short, look at that. It still works though, right? Yeah, I gotta do something about this. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Maybe get a new cord. Jesus Christ. At least it's working. I mean, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know why it's doing that. There we go. That was out of its, uh... That was out of its little mount. There we go. There we go. Working. Oh, oh, I won! I friggin' won! Yeah! <laughs> ah, my frickin' hand stock! Ah, I hate these things. It's working pretty reliably now. Nice. I have. This is. Oh, I'm out of credits. I'm going to have to put it back into free play mode. The counter is still not working. I'm not sure why. One of my viewers suggested that it had a faulty chip. Um, that's possible. So now we're all loaded up. I got the glass back on, but something happened. This handle snapped off. It's just glued or epoxy to the glass. And this glass is freaking heavy, so... Um, I believe rear view mirror glue will hold it just fine. Anyway, uh, so, yes, we've got Mickey on the crane there. Just keeping an eye on, keeping an eye on things. Yeah, so 
so I gotta... Well, every stuffed animal in my house is in here now. Most of these I've had since I was a baby. Like the glow arm. Mag Mickey is magnetic, by the way. That's, that's how he's still there. I've got one more to put in here, too. One of those stupid slammer things. I'll put that in there. I want that worm. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Okay. Not gonna happen. 